The intent of this video is to discuss the roles and responsibilities of the B-17 bomber's upper turret gunner. The upper turret gunner is a dual role position as he is also the plane's flight engineer with the rank of staff sergeant. In the gunner's role, he is responsible for protecting the plane from overhead and level fighter attacks. His defensive armament consists of twin Browning M2 50 caliber machine gun. Each gun fires up to 14 rounds per second. The upper turret and sighting system was designed by the Sperry Corporation. The turret is located just behind the pilot and co-pilot seats. As a flight engineer, he is responsible for in-flight troubleshooting of the engines, the various plane systems, dislodging hung bombs, and assisting the pilot and co-pilot in calling out flight data. The flight engineer is also primarily responsible for fuel management. This would entail transferring fuel from the outboard Tokyo tanks, the feeder tanks, into the dedicated engine tanks. Characteristics of the B-17 upper turret include the turret transparency material is plexiglass. There's no armored glass. The turret weighs about 650 pounds with a diameter of 41 inches across. The system was designed with an automatic fire cutoff feature to keep from shooting your own airplane. The turret is powered by a self-contained electrohydraulic motor, 360 degree azimuth rotation in about nine seconds, zero to 85 degree depression elevation. Either trigger engages both barrels. The unit will cut off if the dead man lever is not engaged. Gun sights are harmonized at a thousand yards. However, effective range is 600 yards, except for head on attacks, which is a thousand yards. If power failure occurs, the gunner can crank the guns into the desired position. This chart outlines the B-17's ammo capacity at each gun station. The upper turret stations carried 400 rounds per gun. The upper turret gun stations are protected from rear attacks by armor panels at fuselage bulkhead number four. The armor was designed to withstand a standard 30 caliber bullet strike. The upper turret gun sight system was integrated with the turret's hand control unit. This image represents a view looking up into the turret's dome with the Sperry K3 automatic computing gun sight and the turret's hand control unit highlighted. The Sperry K3 automatic computing gun sight is shown in this view. The gun sight is a mechanical computer that calculates a ballistic solution for the machine gun bullets accounting for target deflection, lead, and gravity. The computer's mechanical inputs are the rate and direction of rotation, the angle and direction of elevation, and the target range. The hand control unit provides deflection inputs into the computer's motors controlling the arc travel and rate of travel of the turret and guns. Like the Norton bomb sight, the Sperry K3 automatic computing gun sight computes a ballistic solution through mechanical means with internal gears, clutches, ball bearings, shafts, and flywheels. This is a view looking through the B-17 upper turret's optical head. If illuminated, the optical head will project a horizontal line and two vertical lines. To obtain the target range, the gunner will need to adjust these vertical lines with the turret hand controller to frame the fighter's wingspan like in these views. Let's do a walk around of the B-17's upper turret fire control unit and the K3 Sperry uh, computing gun sight. And let's start with the fire control unit. So the fire control unit is actually mechanically connected to the K3 gun sight with this range cable, which we'll talk about in a second. So we can control the turret's direction of travel by rotating these handles. So this gives us azimuth control. The farther we rotate the handles, actually the faster the turret rotates. 
And you can recall that we can rotate the turret uh, 360 degrees in about um, nine seconds. So we have elevation control also all the way up to uh, 85 degrees. And then we'll have a mechanical stop so we can't go any further. So on the left hand handle, we have the dead man lever and that's spring loaded. So if the gunner uh, releases this lever, then that breaks the electrical circuit and the turret will stop rotating. We also have a trigger which sends electrical signal to the solenoid of the Browning machine gun. Now we have a trigger on the other side, so either trigger works both barrels. It's not like the left trigger works the left barrel and the right trigger fires the right barrel. Either trigger will fire both barrels simultaneously. We also have a comm system. We have a throat mic and a headset. So to communicate with the rest of the crew, uh, we have this push to talk switch and it's uh, spring loaded. Actually all these levers and, and buttons are all spring loaded. On the right hand side, we have our right hand trigger and we have our uh, motorcycle throttle, which is our, uh, which adjusts the range on the reticle up here. So as I rotate this throttle, if you watch this cable, you'll see it actually rotating. And that is putting inputs into the uh, Sperry computer so that we can get the appropriate range of the system. Okay, moving on to the K3 gun sight. Let's take a look at some of its features and then we'll see how these both these systems integrate together. So this is the optical head and the optical head rotates independently from the, from the gun sight. Um, we have a sky filter. So what I'm doing is I'm moving this lever back and forth and this is made by Polaroid. Let me see if I can pull it out. So as I rotate the sky filter, notice it's getting darker. So if we have an interceptor coming from the sun, we can go ahead and adjust the uh, illumination or transparency through here to make it darker or lighter. So we'll keep that all the way lighter. We also have a flip up sight. Now this is only used for point blank firing. So if the interceptor is within 200 yards or closer, we'll go ahead and flip this up and then use this as our, as our sighting system. So we'll keep that down for now. If we move to the other side of the gun sight, we have a, um, a knob which we use to adjust for the wingspan of the interceptor. So we took aircraft recognition courses in our cadet days, and we know that the uh, Falkwell F-190 has a wingspan of 34 feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dial in that wingspan. So the range goes all the way. So I'm, I'm looking at this uh, dial over here. It goes from 20 feet, 20 feet, all the way to 60 feet. So we go all the way over here. So that might be a twin fighter of some sort. So... 34 feet is right about there-ish. So now I've dialed in the wingspan into the computer. This dial tells us the range of the interceptor and that's in um, hundreds of yards. So right now it's set at 600 yards, which is when we would start uh, opening fire for any other direction other than uh, head on. So I can change that range just by uh, rotating my my range knob here when I frame the wingspan. We have an on off switch and then we also have, since it's an illuminated optical head, we have the ability to increase and decrease the brightness of that optical head. So I think we covered everything. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So I've actually bypassed the electrical system uh, with a LED light in here. And if we look in the optical head, we should see two vertical lines and one horizontal line. And what we would want to do is just make sure that we frame the wingspan on those horizontal lines. So I'm, I'm changing those horizontal lines so that they're um, really far apart. So that would be at 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards. And what I'm doing is I'm rotating the motorcycle range grip to rotating this cable and that's changing the, uh, the range on my on my dial so if i keep going that's 600 yards 700 yards 800 yards 900 yards and a thousand yards so if we see those vertical lines if the wingspan of our falkwolf f-190 was framed 
in those two vertical lines, then uh, we the interceptor is a, is a thousand yards away. So that would be a good head on attack. We could go ahead and open up with our short birds. There's 900 yards, 800, 700, 600. I'm just looking at this dial over here. So that's the, um, that's the distance of the vertical lines if we frame the wingspan at that. So as the interceptor is getting closer and closer to us, we're just continually adjusting those, those lines, you know, making them farther and farther apart because it'll appear that the uh, interceptor is getting closer and uh, we need to take that into account. As long as the fighter is properly tracked and the wingspan is framed correctly, the 50 caliber slugs should hit their target. The advantage of the K3 gun sight over the other B-17's 35 mil rad ring sights is that the upper turret gunner can now fire at any target since the gun sight accounts for target lead, not just deflection. The top turret gunner will start tracking the fighter at position A. When the fighter is in range at 600 yards or so, he will open fire. His gun sight's optical head will stay with the fighter at point B, while his barrels will be pointed in a direction such that the bullets will strike at point C. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider clicking on the round subscribe button, World War II U.S. Bombers.